Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be discussing the top 10 things not to say to a Blythe Collector. And I have my personal assistant here to help me along the way. Please welcome Little Miss Jill. Hi guys, we're gonna be talking about things that make my dad go mad. <laughs> and I have some tea, darling, some tea. <laughs> that I will be sipping and spilling all the while. So let's get down to business. Number one, is that a brat stall? Now I can go into all the specifics about the differences between blights and brats. One of them has accentuated lips. The other one has emphasis on the head and the big eyes and the tiny torso. But in reality, I could best sum it all up to one of them you can find potentially for $5 in the toy bin at Goodwill. And the other you could potentially find for $5 in the toy bin at Goodwill. One of them is a lot less likely. And there you have it. The difference between Blythe and a Bratz. Number two, is that your mini me? When I'm lucky enough to be photographing a Blythe with red hair, people that observe me doing so think that I'm out and about, oot and aboot, with my mini me. And they think to themselves, this must be a fad or a hashtag on Instagram or Facebook or another social media platform. And they pretty much think of it as a gimmick, but the reality is Blythe is not a gimmick. Blythe is an art piece. She is an inspiration to artists around the world, and she is not a gimmick. Although I don't blame them for noticing my redhead beauties, because who doesn't love red hair? I myself am envious of anyone with red hair. I wish I had red hair, to be honest. Number three. My sister slash aunt slash mom slash wife. And I only say slash because I've heard all of these in public. Coming from people that observe me, people I don't know. Used to collect those a long time ago. And they're probably collecting dust in an attic somewhere. The reason you don't want to tell a Blythe collector that you know someone who potentially owns a horde of Kenners that may or may not be abandoned in an attic is because everyone's dreamed of landing that 25 cent Kenner. If you claim otherwise, you are lying. Everyone aspires to one day find a Kenner at a garage sale, Goodwill. I've seen the receipts. Don't act innocent. Some of us are lucky enough to be in those situations where we land an expensive doll at a ridiculous price. The reason why I don't like people telling me that they have a relative that owns a lot of Blythe dolls that they used to collect back in the day, which tells me it's a Kenner, is because don't tempt me, girlfriend. If you know someone who has a lot of Kenners, my initial instinct is to ask, and when is their next garage sale again? Not that I do, but it's tempting. Now, usually I just bat my eyelashes, make some sort of remark and move on with the discussion or end the conversation. Um, I don't ask them when the next garage sale is. I don't ask them if they're selling their dolls because I know that if I went there, it'd be too tempting. And you know it would be tempting for you as well. So I changed the subject. So please don't tell me that you know someone who has a hoard of Kenners. I will want to purchase them for 25 cents each. I won't do it, but I'll want to do it. Number four, how much do they cost? 
when this is coming from someone you don't know, these are all things that people have said to me while I've been photographing in public. So when this comes from someone that you don't know, don't give them the sticker price. Sort of give them a ballpark because you don't know what their motives are. You don't know what they're gonna think if you tell them the exact value of your doll. I don't go around with Jill and tell people how much I spent on her, but I feel like some people who may not know better may do this. Don't go around telling strangers the exact value that you spent on your Blythe. I usually say customs are around $500. They can be one to $2,000 depending on the customizer and their brand name recognition. Or if it's a stock doll, it can be around two to $300 or four to $500 if it's a limited release. So give them a ballpark. Don't give them an exact amount, honey. Don't tell them, I'm gonna give you a random number. It's not what I paid for her, but don't walk around in the city and be like, hey, and have them be like, yo, tell me about this doll. How much did she cost? And don't be like, $1,500, baby, yeah. No, don't do that. You have to protect yourself. Blythe collectors, don't let Blythe collectors walk around, walk around town announcing how much money they spent on their dolls. Give them a ballpark, a respectable ballpark, be honest, but don't show them the receipt if you know what I mean. Safety first. So either one of two things could happen in that situation. They could either look at you like you're crazy, or they could look at her like they're crazy and start to get ideas. Mm-mm. We do not have time for that. That almost got me in a lot of trouble in New York City. You don't want to do that. Don't go there, sister. Number five. Do you want me to hold her for you? This is an innocent question. I feel bad for putting it on the list, but no, I don't want you to hold my life for me. This happens when people see my struggle and they wanna help with my struggle, but in reality, I'm willing to struggle rather than hand over my expansive doll into your hands. Like, if I'm like crouched over or leaning over and I'm like trying to get the photo, I'm trying to get the angle right, and someone comes up to me and says, oh, would you like me to hold her for you? You know, no, I would not. I respond more politely than that, of course, but no, I don't want strangers to hold my doll for me. Um, I would rather struggle. Maybe speak for yourself in this situation, I know. But I would rather struggle. Uh, Blights, if you were to drop them, there would be damage. Like, even now, when I'm like above a carpeted floor, I would not drop her because there would be damage. She is fragile as a butterfly. You do not want to harm your Blythe dolls. Even if it's by inadvertently trusting someone to hold her, you don't want to harm your dolls. And many people may not understand the value of Blythe or how fragile Blythe is. So I politely decline. It's a kind gesture I wish people wouldn't offer, but I have to be respectful because it's coming from a good place. If human beings see someone struggling, they want to help. It's human nature, but I'd rather struggle. Now, if my life was on the line and I had my doll in one hand and I was like holding on for dear life with the other one and you asked me to hold my doll, I would hand you the doll and then grab onto the cliff with my other hand. I think that's one of the few exceptions. Just trying to cover my bases here. This leads into number six, which is, can I touch her? I appreciate when people actually ask, can I touch her? So don't hunt me down for putting this on the list. 
I prefer someone asking rather than doing without asking. But I kind of wish they wouldn't ask either. And I'll tell you why. I am the type of collector that keeps my dolls sacred. I don't even like it when I touch my dolls. Um, I kind of wish that I would wear gloves when I touched my dolls. I don't. I know that's kind of frowned upon, especially if you have customs. But I don't like it when I touch my dolls. My dolls don't like it when I touch my dolls. I don't like it when other people touch my dolls. So when people ask me if they can touch my dolls, it automatically spikes my anxiety. I am so envious of people at Blythe conventions who show up, bring their whole Blythe family, have them all out, spread out on a table for everyone to touch, pick up, comb, brush their hair, hug, rub their bellies, whatever. I'm envious of those people because I am not that person. The moment that you even start pointing at one of my dolls, mm, that's a big pet peeve, the pointing. I'm not talking like, like, oh, that doll over there. I'm talking this doll right here to the point where there's like less than an inch between the point and the doll. Oh, it drives me nuts. It makes me shiver and tingle. No, do not point, do not touch. If you are going to touch, it should be initiated by the collector who owns the doll. For example, this is Jill. Hi, this is my Blythe Jill. And um, if you're curious, here, let me show you how her eye neck changes. Here you go, you just hold her here. Like in that case, you would touch her. But don't touch her if I don't initiate, honey. I don't even think Daryl touches my dolls. I don't let him. I don't know if he's ever touched my dolls, to be honest. I mean, definitely not under my supervision. Jill? No, you keep him clear away from me at all times. Nobody touches me but you. Hmm. Attitude eyelids. Seriously, Jill? And people don't believe me when I say my blithes are divas. Honey, she does not want you to touch her. Don't touch her. You're very sweet and nice, I know. Okay. So, uh, number seven. Hmm. I have to reenact this one. Okay, pretend that she's being held by someone else. And I'm like some random person at, at like a theme park wearing a fanny pack. Okay, here we go. Oh, sweetie. Uh, are you enjoying the sunshine today? The lovely weather? Aren't you glad your dad brought you out to the parks? Mm, it's a little hot, but it's nice. It's the middle of summer. Uh, the flowers are blooming. Aren't you just having a great day? Oh, you like that? You like the castle? Oh, you're just having the blast of your life. And now this is me on the other end, holding the doll. Hi. And at that point, the conversation is beyond saving. If you are going to have a conversation with my dolls, have a conversation with me as well. Rule of thumb, if you talk to my dolls, talk to me. Don't choose one or the other. You can't talk to my dolls and not talk to me. It just doesn't make sense. It's kind of weird. It makes me feel weird. If you make a Blythe collector feel weird, you're doing something, honey. You, you're you going places. Like, that's a big accomplishment. We are a weird group of people. If you're able to make me feel weird, it's just bizarre. I wish people would acknowledge the collector as well. This almost never happens, but when it does happen, it it's just, it's not an ideal situation. And you know that they're doing it on purpose. It's not like, any other situation where they may not know because once you do speak up they do eventually start talking to you but it's like come on I may collect dolls I may photograph them in public but I can also hold a conversation with a human being it's possible number eight this is the most damaging thing you can ever say to a Blythe collector or an artist in general that's creepy 
Oh yes, the birds are chirping to that one. That's creepy. That is the most damaging thing you can say to a creative person because it kills creativity. We've all seen the celebrities that have come out of the woodworks with their Blythe collection. And I think it's an amazing thing. We've all applauded it. We're all stoked about it. And then there's those trolls that populate their Instagram, their Facebook, and point their finger at these public figures and say, that's creepy. Like, why are you showing this to us? It's creepy. And the moment that happens, the celebrities in what I've experienced have begun to step back and they don't post as often or even not at all anymore. I don't think it's right. I don't think we should be calling people or their dolls creepy. If you don't understand it, doesn't mean it's creepy. It just means you don't understand something or something's new to you. But if you have an open mind, you can learn about it or you can point your finger and call it creepy. But don't do that because especially people who are new to the community are very impressionable. Not so much me anymore because uh, I've been around. I've been around town for a while. I mean, the tea is still hot, but you know what I'm saying? It doesn't affect me that much anymore. But if you're new to the hobby and you only have a few dolls in your collection and someone tells you that what you're doing is creepy, it can be damaging, it's discouraging, it's not kind. So don't do it. If anything, reword it. Just say, oh, that's peculiar. I've never seen that before. It, it, I don't know. Just don't say that something's creepy. We want people to continue celebrating their blights and their collection, public figure or otherwise. Now, number nine. This is kind of a filler, but it's an educational filler. How does their iMac work? If my memory serves me correct, I believe Haley taught me this method of explanation and it's worked every time, just like the bend and snap. What you want to do is you pretend that their eyeballs are dice and you say the dice are on two ends of a stick. You pull the string that's connected to the stick. The stick turns and the face of the dice turns as well so that when the eyelids open back up, a new face is exposed. And when people think of the face of a dice, suddenly the light bulb clicks on, they understand the mechanism. If I'm going to be extremely technical during this educational filler, which is only gonna last a few more minutes, I promise, you hold the back of the plate like this. You don't hold the body because then all the stress is on the neck. You hold the back of the plate, and yes, I've had a neck snap on me before, in public, it was humiliating and scary and it almost ruined my doll. You hold the back of the faceplate, let the strings fall through your fingers, pull down, ahem, pull down, and then you grab the other string, pull down. Notice I'm pulling at a 90 degree angle so the string doesn't shred against her faceplate. Very important, because that will also snap. Many things can snap with Blythe. Sometimes I feel like I'm about to snap. And voila, nothing's harmed. And the person also understands how it works without opening the faceplate because they can compare it to something in their everyday life. As opposed to saying, oh, it's two eyeballs and some mechanism and the eyeballs roll back and then a new color and direction is exposed and then you pull it again and the eyeballs roll. Like the person will be lost. At that point, they're looking at you like, get me out of here. Like maybe those are the people who are calling Blythe creepy. There's nothing creepy about this. If you explain everything, everything makes sense. And at the end of the day, it's all for the sake of a cute doll. Very far from creepy. Number 10, sir. Mm. Mm. Ugh. I'm gonna regurgitate just 
I'm gonna regurgitate, regurgitating this memory. Oh, oh God, I can't believe this happened. So this is number 10 on things not to say to a Blythe collector. So, please finish your turkey leg before entering the theater. Excuse me? Excuse me? This Twiggy vegan right here, you want this vegan to finish his turkey leg before entering the theater? You beast! Now, let me give you some background. Hopefully there's an explanation for this. You're probably really lost right now. Once upon a time, I went to a preview showing of Cinderella live action. It was not the whole movie, it was just a sneak peek. And I was in the theater and the usher sees me with Jill. Jill was there. She survived the turkey leg. She's been through a lot, honey. And I always walk with my dolls facing me because especially when you're at a theme park, you don't know if something's gonna fly up and smack your doll in the face. There's soda spilling, bubbles flying, birds pooping. Oh yes, birds. I've come within a foot of a bird poop before. It can happen to anyone. So I hold my dolls as if they are guarded. Like I guard them with my life. So when I was approaching the entrance turnstile to the actual theater, I don't know why I'm pronouncing it that way, but to the theater, she observed me, the usher lady, and bless her heart, Jill had a perm. She was wearing a strawberry blonde stock Blythe scalp that was gorgeous, but it had a perm and it was in pigtails. So she saw the back of my Blythe all permed out in pigtails and ready to go for this preview. And she tells me to finish my turkey leg before entering the theater. That's not someone knocking on the door. That is actually my refrigerator. But she tells me to finish consuming my turkey leg. It was a good perm. It wasn't a bad turkey leg. The poor girl, she was in shell shock for weeks. I don't know if you remembered, but I literally posted on my Facebook, like she was in hiding. I didn't photograph her for weeks or months because of that incident, because she was scarred. I mean, imagine if someone called you a turkey leg. Ridiculous. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. It was low lighting, you know, it was underground. Maybe it's theater lingo. Maybe it means wrap it up. You're about to enter a theater, sir. Zip up your backpack, put away your doll and finish the turkey leg. I don't know the jargon. I hope that she didn't actually think this was a turkey leg. I'm trying to use my imagination here. I can see it possibly like break a leg. Like that makes sense. Not really, but it does. Like finish your turkey leg and enter the theater when you're done. It makes sense. Like zip up, finish your turkey. It doesn't make sense at all. Oh God. I'm sorry, Jill, for bringing this up. She's scarred still. She can't handle it. So that's number 10 of things not to tell a Blythe collector. Please finish your turkey leg. I don't know how she ever recovered from that. Honestly, if Jill can recover from turkey leg, she's gold. She's gold in my Blythe family. Like nothing's gonna phase her at this point. All right, thanks for joining me for tea. And I will hopefully see you in another video that won't be for a while, but I will keep in touch. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Like this video, subscribe. Tell your kids, tell your wife, tell everyone. And to the 18 or so subscribers that I have, thank you. You are very much appreciated. Are there any last words or considerations, Jill, that you would like to include? covered it all. But seriously, turkey leg? Turkey leg? It was a good perm too. It was a good perm. It was a good perm. 
She needs some support right now. It was a good perm, Jill. Turkey leg. Turkey leg my butt. <laughs>